Yeah, three. It's jerks. probably it's probably some technicality where it's tenderloin yeah. cuts or something. But it was it's good. Like when you go into a restaurant, it's Kobe beef sliders. I'm like, nobody's making hamburgers out of Kobe beef, yeah, especially for, sliders. Not for nine ninety nine a happy hour. <laughs> yeah. This episode of Bourbon Pursuit is made possible through listeners like you, supported through Patreon, and with partnerships brought to you by the following. Day Drinkin' Jerky. Always smoked, never dried. Day Drinkin' Jerky is made with bourbon and other spirits mixed into the marinade and then slow smoked. Find flavors like bourbon black pepper and hazmat Saz teriyaki on their online store, daydrinkinjerky.com. Use offer code PURSUIT to save 10% on your first order. Hey everyone, with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up next week, we're going to have next week's episode be released on Wednesday so you have something new to listen to with all those holiday travels. Today's episode is a bit long-winded at times, but hang around towards the end where we give some ideas in case you're struggling with some of those Christmas grift ideas. We also have five sponsor slots available remaining in 2017, so if you're looking to get your message and your product in front of 10,000 whiskey geeks right before Christmas time, this is your chance. Send us an email at the duo T H E D U O at bourbonpursuit.com. We're currently at 123 awesome reviews on iTunes, and we can't thank you all enough for taking time to write them. And if you find yourself bored during your travels, please just take the time to write one, and we continue this onward trajectory that we're working with. In addition, in the next two weeks, we're going to need as many of you as possible to fill out a survey for us, so we continue to grow the show even further. It's simple information and more about your preference in buying bourbon. Who knows? We may even do a giveaway for that as well. Because honestly, who just doesn't love free stuff? As always, support us on Patreon because it keeps this puppy rolling. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash bourbon pursuit. With that, enjoy this week's episode. Welcome back to the episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast, the official podcast of bourbon, the number one podcast of bourbon. Back again with the 14th edition of the Bourbon Community Roundtable. This is always a fan favorite. Kenny, your Bourbon Pursuit host here. Ryan can't be here tonight, but we've got uh, almost a full quorum of the roundtable, plus a special guest that we've had on the show before. And this is going to be a, a pretty good episode because we're going to touch a, a little bit of topics. As usual, we're going to we're going to hit in some of the recent news. Uh, Carrie's going to wow us with a, a live review of something that he has been waiting to share because uh, everybody knows how much that, uh, I don't know, maybe we, we kind of give Diageo a lot of crap, but this is this is going to be his night to uh, see if they can redeem themselves a little bit. And then, you know, we're getting to the holiday, holidays as well. And so we're definitely going to talk about, you know, what are some of those things that either would be good gifts to give to your uh, that per- per- person that loves bourbon in your life or maybe like that's something that just we want and uh, and we're just putting it out there for ourselves and maybe we'll get a, a special fan mail of a UPS package you know coming on our doorsteps but let's go ahead and go around the horn uh, first I'm gonna let uh, Nick take over from here so Nick welcome back buddy hey thanks well 14 this is number 14 yeah I know can you believe it we if you if you take this and we do we do these every three weeks, I mean we're we're hitting on damn near a year now. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, my name's Nick from Breaking Bourbon. Uh, find us online at breakingbourbon.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Breaking Bourbon. Check out the release calendar. A lot going on this month, and uh, we're actually getting ready to kind of redo our best of list. So start you'll start to see some. Uh, kind of redos of what we got this week and then we're going to be rolling out some new ones in the upcoming weeks. So we got a, we got a lot of work behind the scenes, but we're going to be updating the site a lot. So check us out. It's good stuff right there. Breaking bourbon. Absolutely. One of the greats. So uh, let's go ahead. You know, everybody we've had Max on the show before is a a round table or two ago. And so I want to say uh, Max, welcome back, buddy. Thanks, man. It's uh, good to be back. Uh, as you said, my name's uh, Max. I'm with, or actually, I run Superfly Bourbon Club with uh, my best friend, Michael, and I'm um, big in Tampa Bay Whiskey Society. So if you're in the Tampa or even general Florida area, definitely look us up. We have, honestly, now it's more than one event a month. Things have been kind of kind of busy, so it's, it's a fun time to be around. And uh, once again, thanks for having me on, Kenny. It's, uh, it's always fun to be here. 
Absolutely. Glad you could make it. And since uh, Kerry just moved out of the window real quick, we'll move on over to Blake. I think he does that on, he, he does that on purpose. You know that, right? He loves being last. But to build the suspense. Oh, I don't okay. know this, but Blake lives in the Everglades. And so um, somewhere in the middle of Florida, like they have, you know, satellite internet and um, – he has to go to Walmart to get a new router every so often. So you got Allig to alligator just took out his Ethernet cable right they, there. Yeah, they chomped at it. it a <laughs> coconut knocked out his his wireless. So, <laughs> uh, so don't blame him. So um, this is Carrie from Suburbia. S u b u r b i a dot com. I am uh, most active on Twitter. My handle is at bourbon underscore gamer. That's where I spend most of my days on the playground, making all the plays. Um, I do blog from time to time. I kind of go in waves right now. The low tide has been settled in for a couple months, but the tide's coming back, baby. I also run North Atlanta Whiskey Society. It's a break off of uh, whiskey drinkers in Atlanta. So you can see we, um, our most recent pick was a 12 year smooth ambler, North Atlanta Whiskey Society. So you actually won't see a 12 year because I don't think they have any more of them, but um, that's keeping me busy, and uh, really, I just follow these other guys and ride off their coattails. I mean, has Atlanta really gotten that big where you guys have, have had to break off and had a, a northern? I mean, is there also a southern and eastern and a western? No, we don't care about any other parts of the city, but Atlanta's unique in that nobody really lives in Atlanta itself. You kind of live <laughs> on the suburbs, either north. Uh, it used to be pretty much north and east. Now, a lot of people moving west and south, so... Um, Atlanta is a huge city. If you've ever been here, I mean, it, for me to travel into the city of Atlanta is about forty-minute drive. So with traffic, so it's it's a fairly large city, and um, we decided just to get a bunch of. There's a lot of bourbon drinkers up this way, up on the north side. So we just kind of we started from there. Of course, we let anybody in if they pay us enough money. So, um, How big are you guys now? Uh, we're at like just a hundred and five. We like that's to, still pretty good because oh, you know because the thing I think the problem is is like when you get like I think ABS or Atlanta Bourbon Side you get like five or six hundred people there right yeah so that's if you're buying a barrel it's going to become like well maybe like one bottle for every two people right so not everyone oh, yeah. has a chance Dude, Tampa also, Bay sorry I was gonna say you also have to be O blood type to make it in just in case <laughs> <laughs> so we we try to limit a lot of different factors but. Um, so that's fun. the universal donor or the... Yes, we can take all the blood. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Blake, yeah. welcome back. Let's go ahead and uh, let you on. introduce yourself again. All right. I'm Blake from bourboner.com. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, B-O-U-R-B-O-N-R. And as everybody knows, it is the site that Carrie is trolling on all the time. So you can always <laughs> find him there too. I got to tell you, I think... Um, Bourbon R has stepped up its game a little bit. There's another page, Bourbon Info Exchange, that I feel like has taken the tide of Newbie Land USA. Bourbon R has moved up into, into you know, like the, just the you can't be dead last. You, it's that you, stratosphere. Oh man, it, it's been a it's been a few weeks of deleting stupid post and not stupid post, but it's just like hey, use the search function. There's really good information in here, but people don't want to see the exact same question asked a hundred times but you know, it's not your personal road. shopping you're willing to help a lot of people which that what's that you're willing to help a lot of people which maybe is why yeah and, and i think that's you know the a lot of people's complaints about the group are when you have thirteen thousand people you're just going to have some newbies and that kind of stuff so you kind of coach people along but at some point you gotta cut it off because then you start losing people who are interested um so yeah i think that's slowly the, growing slowly progressing <laughs> i think i think that's probably one of the inherent problems that that facebook has versus like old school bur bourbon forms like straight bourbon and stuff like that is like nothing's indexed nothing is easily searchable like it, maybe that are people just lazier i don't know but yeah you you do get a lot of repeat questions that happen in all these forums it's i mean how many times do a year do we have to see a new black maple hill bottle out there and somebody says should i buy this mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it's 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 probably at least once a month, right? And yeah. oh, uh, and, more than that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's I think it's a it's a it's a flaw in the Facebook thing because you could definitely if if you had straight bourbon or something like that, everything's indexed and like everybody just knows like those forum boards. Like you always know to search first before mm -hmm. go ahead and app you know opening up a new thread. They did change the search function like two months ago, and it always defaults to most recent, which is always irrelevant. 
and you have mm -hmm. to switch it to latest. And then I still don't think it's easy to look through stuff. Um, I think the old way that they had it was a lot easier. Facebook yeah, it's even likes worse on to, your phone now. Yeah, Facebook likes to keep you on your toes. They <laughs> so they almost want you to not know that, so you post anyway, and you do more talking. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I feel like I, I don't see a lot of should I buy this post, though, on the Bourbon or Facebook group. I mean, there's oh, like I'm, I'm deleting all, all day long. I'm Are you? <laughs> there you go. There you no, go. I try. If it's somebody's like brand new I tr and it's a legitimate comment, I try not to. But, well, at first, you know, I, there was a group, I think, that just thought it was fun to – use the same joke over and over again. It would be like an old bottle of Elmer T. Lee or something is, hey, this bottle looks different. Uh, should I buy it? I'm like, okay. Like it, it was funny six months ago when somebody did it. The 23rd time, it's not as funny as the <laughs> – okay. Yeah. There's trolling and then there's being creative and entertaining. And uh, you, you got to either be creative and entertaining with the trolls or it gets deleted. You know, If it's just yeah. dumb, it's deleting. Yeah, now it's getting into that time of the season when people are posting pictures of Van Winkle bottles and VTAC bottles and saying, oh, last one on the shelf. And then people are always asking, well, where is it? Like, tell me, where is, is there any more? But thankfully, there's a, there's a law, or not a law, there's a, a rule in our, in our local group that says if you, you have to like share the knowledge unless it's Van Winkle or VTAC. You don't have to actually share anything at that rate. Because nobody yeah. wants you to take their honey hole, right? So yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I like the uh, don't ask, don't. T we we have that kind of unwritten rule with our group where we'll share, hey, what we got, and you just don't ask where it is. You know, you can give up that information if you want to, but um, otherwise, I'm not gonna be like, hey, how about you tell me where you bought that? <laughs> just, yeah, well, not gonna happen. Our local group has almost 1,100 people in it, so it's. Oh ridiculous right there's just yeah, well, there's, there's tampa, towns and vultures everywhere tampa bay whiskey society i think we just broke 1500 wow. so it's the same way like the delivery schedule changed at the local stores and like three days later everybody knew about it <laughs> it's crazy how much power the groups have too the power. yeah it's it's yeah. awesome it's just a catch-22 sometimes yeah but you know yeah, like like bottles of, of of something limited at a local store that everybody knows about, and fifteen hundred members of the group. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah, I think I think you gave a good example last week, Carrie, of uh, when people were waiting around for a special delivery that somebody put on their Facebook news feed, and then they show up. There's like thirty people, and it was only like HD barrel proof or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it was single barrel. And, yeah, uh, well, and the owner never said we're getting anything good. He just said good stuff will be on the truck on Friday. And everyone assumed it was George G. Stagg. So he had 30 people waiting when he opened the door. He's like, guys, the truck doesn't even come till two o'clock. So then he had another crowd at 2.30 and just got E.H. Taylor single barrel. Of course, everybody, all the entitled people were pissed that they waited around. It's like, I never said I was kidding. I just said, we're getting some good stuff. And he's one of those honest yeah. owners. Love him to pieces. And, and he thinks he's going to have like, 30 bottles of it too. That's, that's no, kind of, he, he just doesn't know what actually is amazing versus good versus, versus pretty average. But, and he's so honest about it and his prices are always, you know, uh, perfect retail prices. Just a great guy. He just didn't know. It was an unfortunate situation where people just, their eyes got bigger, you know, as soon as they saw something and, and dreamed big. And, and then once people start talking about it, you know, how gossip spreads with that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's what. So, uh, Sean Weisinger just said uh, Houston Bourbon Society just hit two thousand yesterday. But oddly enough, I'm actually in Houston Bourbon Society just because of the Facebook group. There's actually a lot of good information on there that Wade puts out. So I'm always kind of just uh, just reading on there. And Michael Urado also put out because this actually just happened. Uh, I think it was in Alabama. Uh, people were camping out for three days at the ABCs because they just had their. Are you serious already? Uh, well, it, it was released this morning. People okay. started camping out Friday night after they close and then they open again on Monday. That's insane. Yeah, it I was actually insane. in Alabama this weekend and I wanted to like drive by a store just to see if there were people camping out, but didn't make that trip, which they had a big problem a couple of years ago, people driving in from basically every state just picking it up. So now they, yeah, I think I remember that story. <laughs> you have to have an Alabama license now? Yeah, Alabama license because uh, some jerks were making the 16-hour uh, drive to camp out and – but didn't you only get like Old Forester birthday bourbon or something? What was it, Kenny? 
uh, I got a William Lou Weller and six Old Forester mm. birthday bourbons, right? Okay, so that's, worth, that's worth it. Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> that worth it. All right. All right. Enough embarrassing old stories. So let's go ahead and let's get into some of the recent news. So the uh, the folks at Diageo slid in a brand new orphan barrel release called Entrapment, which is a 25-year Canadian whiskey. And thankfully, we have one guy here tonight that bit the bullet and said, I will go and buy a bottle of this and do a live review on the show. So, Carrie, man, it is now your time to shine. I did this for y'all, by the way. I, I was filled with regret all day today. It's like it's like the name was true. It was entrapment. Like I felt like I had to freaking buy the bottle just to be the only person that actually opens the stuff and tries it. So uh, I actually saw it. it. The first picture of it ended up on secondary markets. That's how I actually found out about it. I had no idea. Of course, Diageo cut me off um, last year after my review of – Poop and holler, um, which right so. I mean, I, I don't really blame them. That was probably the worst release I've ever tried, besides the white corn Woodford Reserve. But um, <laughs> shout out but, Brown Foreman. <laughs> but they actually the last releases have been really good. So it just was one bad release. So it says uh, entrapped in weathered oak barrels inside the Gimli Distillery, home of Crown Royal Canadian Whiskey. This 25-year-old Canadian whiskey masterpiece has been looking to make its escape. Aromas of vanilla, toffee, and toasted oak abound in this delicate whiskey. The palate offers a smooth and creamy texture with hints of walnut and tobacco, escaping to a warm finish of dried fruit. Basically describing any rye whiskey you may well, ever have. Um, and the go proof ahead, is go ahead, and, go ahead and start cracking it open. We'll, we'll ask a few questions for you here, too. Well, i got to finish my killing card and um, clean it out. So keep talking while I, while I get prepared here. Well, what was the uh, what was the retail price on it? One fifty nine ninety nine. I decided to go with that cognac thing, uh, Max. Nice. That cool. stuff is that stuff is good. Yeah. It's good. It's hot. It was. Yeah, it'll get you. So it's funny that cough was timed with the retail price. There was a <laughs> perfect timing there. That's that's what it was, and I, I guess I'll throw this out to the other guys while he is uh, while he's sitting here getting himself a new glass uh, set up. So I guess Nick, I mean, in today's market, you know, when somebody is like it's like one hundred fifty nine bucks. I mean, are in, in something that whether it's orphan barrel, whether it's something else, like how quick are you to pull out your credit card and say, "Yep, immediately I'll buy it." Well, think of all the different stuff that's coming out right now. What's the one thing you can't just do? You can't just go barrel fish or barrel finish. You can't just go mix a couple things together. What what can't you just do? Well, I mean, you got FOMO, right? So you have to you yeah, have time. To buy it. Right the yeah. time. I mean, it's it, 25 years. You can't just go do that. So that I think really creates that enticement for people to say, this is something you don't see pop up that often. There's really not much, if anything, with an age statement like that. That's that kind of price. I mean, you almost feel like you have to buy it. Mm -hmm. And Carrie, what was the, the proof on it as well? 82. 82 proof. I mean, there you got it. 82 proof that Carrie's going to tell us in a minute, but it's probably not fantastic. I mean, I'm sure there's $30 bottles out there that are better, but you, you got to say it's enticing when it's within that affordability range. And it's something that you just, you're just not going to see every day. You're not going to see it every day. And you hope yeah. when it's so new, you hope that it actually is something decent. You do. You you have hope for it. I mean, it's it's like it's almost like you have to. Just like you said, the name is very fitting. It's 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 like you you need to give it a try. You see it on there, you're gonna grab it because you don't know if you're gonna get another chance to get it if you see it on the shelves. Is uh, is Gimli the the distillery that the uh, all the Crown private picks came from? Does yeah, they that? make Crown. They make Crown, right? Yeah, I I thought yeah. that was like kind of the special little. It's oh, such a... I could be wrong now. I mean, Maxwell, I'll ask you a question. So when you when you look at Orphan Barrel and what they've been doing, I mean, a lot of these are pretty low proof releases. I mean, I don't know if there's been anything that's been over like ninety eight proof. Uh, do you think that has anything to do with? I I don't want to say it's their way to. Uh, extend a barrel's life to be able to push more bottles of it. It could be. Um, but I mean, in a, in a market where we have a lot of people that are 
that really want more high proof stuff. Uh, do you think they're hitting their target market by by having these lower proof bourbons out there? I think the main thing about Orphan Barrel, and to, to be honest, let me preface this by saying I'm not a huge fan of them at all. Um, I think they proof it down because they're trying to mask what it is. Like the average, like you said, like where does a 25 year old Canadian whiskey come from? Like if that really was something amazing that the people that made it would release it, then it would be some crown royal ultra premium thousand dollar bottle, but it's not. And I think they go with the age statements, which are disappearing, which is honestly a good strategy. Like, uh, like we were saying earlier, it's 25 years old. You don't see that. The rhetorics, you know, you see a 23 year old, a 22 year old, you get the chance to compare a 21 to a 22 to a 23. I think it's really, really cool in theory. I just don't personally like the whiskey. So I, I don't really go for them anymore. I bought a couple early on. Uh, I think the Forged Oak, the 15 year one was okay. Uh, Gifted Horse was okay. Um, I wasn't really a fan of rhetoric. I wasn't really a fan of much of the rest that I tried. But I do love the age statement. I love the bottles. They, they got great marketing. I'm just not a fan of the juice itself. So Carrie, go ahead and kind of tell us uh, impressions. What are, you, what are you getting? Well, the first thing I smelled was like a shoe, like a leather shoe and it um, <laughs> Like the inside like, or the outside? Like, like, the, the, like the inside kind of, like a, a warm <laughs> leather shoe. And I, I tried going back to it and it's kind of like every other whiff has it and then sometimes it, it does smell like a nice rye like a um, almost like a baby sazerac you know like there's definitely like a rye there but occasionally it just smells like a leather shoe and not like a, a delicious leather shoe but like it's been left out in the sun after going fishing kind of leather shoe um and i've taken a couple sips but now i really feel like now the palate is ready to experience the 25 year rye Here's the moment of truth, everyone. I want a Sean Drum Connery. Uh, or who, wasn't Sean Connery in the movie Entrapment? Can we get an IMDb check on that? <laughs> if so, I want. <laughs> Say it again, Carrie. It sucks. It's like I don't taste anything more than like a watered down Crown Royal that maybe is two years old. I mean, there, how do you taste 25 years in this? There's not, there's like. There's so much water in it. As I say, do you think it's a side effect of the being only 82 proof? I mean, it's like 2.5 years. I don't, I mean, it's not that, it's not horrible. Like Hoop and Holler was light years worse than this. But I just, I mean, I know what aged rice taste like, and this doesn't taste anything like an aged rye. Just tastes like a, a smooth crown royal that's been watered down for a while. Like you left it on ice and... All of a sudden, you come back to it. You forgot it's over there in the corner. Or you woke up the next morning, and you're like, oh, let me finish my crown. <laughs> does, so the, does Canadian so, whiskey have a higher entry proof than American? Like, I know, like, a lot of the European I'm, – I'm a bourbon guy, so I don't really know all the foreign stuff. But does is that true with Canadian as well, that they go in at a much higher entry proof? So then if it comes down to 80, then that really is, like, most Well, that's water. what I'm thinking. You think 25 years, it's got to be at least – at least up to 140 proof or so. I mean, I guess it's all depends, but say even 120 to bring it down to 82. Yeah, what's that? I'm gonna have to do math. Like 50 percent. That's a lot yeah, of water. Yeah. yeah. Does it does it evaporate as much when it's freezing cold in Canada? Like you've got them in rack houses, and you barely ever get summers. That's true. It, it probably time. ages differently as well. Yeah, the proof the proof could definitely go down. I mean, it's not hor like it's definitely not the worst thing they've ever put out, but it is highly disappointing for saying twenty five years on the front. Like, there's, it, it's drinkable. It's it's nice. You just you don't get, and the finish just dies so fast. It's like you get a little bit of flavor that's a smooth rye, and then I mean, just gone after that. There's no, you know, like I, I always compare stuff to like Sazerac eighteen, where that finish just goes on and on and on. It's just that oaky Pretty finish caramel finish that just keeps going and this is so thin i mean it's only eight proof different from saz 18. saz 18 is only 90 proof and it gives me that finish this is only eight away from it i feel it's so much lighter mm. it just evaporates after you have a couple like a sip of it uh z hayden yeah. thinks that they're they're targeting the the whiskey hype train right now and that you know maybe they're just 
lowering the proof to maximize the number of bottles that they're putting out there. But he also said at least the basil Hayden rye only charges $40 for being watered down. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good in any way. Yeah, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Bourbon and Pursuit Roundtable for taking one for the team, Kerry. That sucks, man. That was a lot of money for this shitty whiskey right here. This uh, so everybody just get out their PayPal, do one dollar to carry. We'll go ahead and <laughs> Listen, we'll there's a group that sells open bottles. I'm gonna see you there later tonight, okay? Because somebody wants to try this. The power you'll, of you'll sell it compels you, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. You'll sell it. Five dollars a sample. I bet you could get rid of it by the end of this roundtable. Look, I'll be honest. <laughs> Rhetoric Twenty One is still one of my favorite bourbons of all time. It was a perfect oh, year. Yeah for one of their orphan barrels. Lost Profit was great. They started out with a bang. I even thought the first batch of Barter House was different yep. than the batch you buy now. I know they say it's the exact same thing. No way. I don't it's, think it it's changed. It's the very little bit. Part, all their beginning stuff was really good. And then they just, they fed into the hype and they fed into the marketing and they changed course. And everything in the past couple years has just sucked. Who said Rhetoric 22? Anybody? Mm -hmm. I've had it. Yeah, it was it was still I good. The first one. That one I liked. I liked the 22 a lot. I was surprised by it. I feel like Rhetoric 21 to me was a perfect drinkable bourbon at a great price point. And then, which is why you still hold on hope that they're going to come back with something at some point. But they, like I said, they just they don't care about the drinker. At that point, it just became let's market and let's make money. They just entrap you. They did. <laughs> they trapped me, and I had no hoop and holler tonight. That's for sure. This was not a gifted horse to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, these names are getting they're getting a little more funny. Uh, this was an old blue hard right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like they're making fun of the, the serious bourbon drinkers now. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, I feel like the joke is on the joke is on us at this point. <laughs> I'll like, tell you why. I, don't. I bet we could just call one and trap me, and they'd still buy it for one hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> Michael Urato yes, says, Michael Urato says, I predict Entrapment will be Jim Murray's Whiskey of the Year in 2019. <laughs> I think there is some truth. There could be some truth to that. Whoever gets to his pocket. I will pocket say that the secondary market on Entrapment doesn't exist right now, which is surprising to me. It, maybe it's a state of the general market, like the market as a whole, which to me has been going stale a little bit, but... You see entrapment, like there was the second bottle posted on secondary sites went for just barely, I mean, not even double retail, which was surprising for, for this release. But I guess, so my bottle number is 14,092. So it's not as rare as the store tells me. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the Kentucky Owl Rye. The same thing happened with that. I know, but it's so good. Kentucky Owl Rye it's, is very But there's good. a lot of it. There is a ton of it, but it's so good. I love and, you know, the, the oh, great I, we liked it. I like it. That's good stuff. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying everybody thought it was super rare, and then now it's Agreed. it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And not only that is they're going to have two releases of it a year, right? So yeah. It's, there's going to be a lot of it that's going to be out there, which is okay. There's, it's actually. Be, I agree. It's a it's a fantastic rye. Uh, you know, we'll uh, maybe next roundtable we'll discuss with our whiskeys of the years, but that already ranks pretty highly in my book. So. That's good stuff. Yeah, let's move on to another subject. I'm bitter now. I'm saying that only because I, I saw that I saw that um, uh, Dixon had put out the the press release that Stoli is building this new park, and I'm just trying to get a Bourbon Pursuit building named after me. So that that's park looks amazing. <laughs> it looks really good. The if Bourbon not, Pursuit maybe. Lazy River. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Maybe a water slide or something like that. Right. Yeah. Super, super fly water slide. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good. This looks cool what they're doing. Now we're on to something. <laughs> that actually is part of news, right? That's one of our news items is uh, the Stoli Kentucky Owl Park there. We could talk about it. I mean, I think it's, it is recent news. I think it is cool. Um, you know, with what the, the kind of money infusion that's going into it, uh, I think that the, the amount of bourbon that they're going to be putting out is going to triple or quadruple in the next few releases because of, of how much he's able to buy. Um, I'm very happy to kind of see what happened with the rye. You know, this was a, a huge, huge release. Like it is everywhere. It's almost in every damn state across the country, it feels like. But I think there hasn't been many people that have said it's bad, right? Now, I, I will say it's it is uh, it is a tough pill to swallow when you have anywhere between one hundred nine dollars to one hundred and sixty dollars of just being retail, 
right? But it is a it is a good rye. It's a great rye. I think it's it's awesome. Was there there was rumor? I don't want to like have false rumors spread, but there was a rumor that they they took whatever source mixers had for their ten year rye. Do y'all know anything or heard anything about that? No, you're just I full of rumors. Though. That. No, I haven't, but the the rumor I heard was Barton. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, w which makes sense when you taste it, and then um, I think Michter's is probably Brown Foreman, but I could be wrong about that too. I agree with the bourbon at least. I definitely taste Brown Foreman. Mm -hmm. Dan, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go ahead and we'll move on to the next uh, piece of this. So there was another kind of slippery release that was out, and that was Jefferson's that released their 16-year presidential selection. I'd actually heard about this uh, probably a little bit over a year ago when we interviewed uh, Trey Zollard on the podcast, and he was talking about there going to be a new presidential release. And honestly, I completely forgot about it. Uh, I did not get invited to the media day here in Louisville to go and try it. Uh, but it is, um, I don't know if, if, if they're up to a, another kind of fun marketing play on it by calling it Twinwood, uh, where they said they were Trey Zoller takes an 11 year bourbon and rebarrels it in a freshly charred oak for another five years, which this is, um, you know, kind of a similar, I mean, it's, it's not a new thing. Everybody's kind of sitting there experimenting, doing this with inside of whiskey. I mean, that's hell. That's what Kentucky Al does. Um, I just thought it was interesting that uh, for a presidential selection, something that is pretty highly regarded inside of the uh, the bourbon world, especially on secondary markets, when you have the 18, the 21, 23, 25 years, that he would go and try to do a, a kind of, I don't want to say a gimmicky release, but a kind of a finished-ish kind of release instead of just a, a good solid 11-year or 16-year bourbon. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Actually, I was trying to pull up the post on Bourboner, but I talked with him a little while ago, and he had told me there was going to be a 20-year presidential release, and then it never happened, and then all of a sudden this popped up, and I guess it was distillery only. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to make its way to the rest of the markets now, but um, I don't know. You know that, that seems to be in Jefferson's kind of MO to do all these different finishes, and so if – you ran out of Stitzelweller bourbon. You got to work something new into the presidential select um, branding. So I, you know, it'll be interesting to taste. But um, is it? Does it say where? What state um, is distilled in before you finished it? It is Kentucky straight Kentucky. bourbon. Whiskey. Yeah. So Barton or Heaven Hill? Don't know. You'll never know. Sixteen year though from Kentucky. Yeah, well, you figure he got it five years ago. Um, oh, it was eleven. So he can put. So it was eleven. Eight. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. it could have been from a lot of places five years ago, to be honest. Um, and you know, most of their well, I guess they're solely ADI at this point um, for their own stuff. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Has anybody tried it? I haven't. Um, I, I do know that there will be 10,000 bottles that will be available uh, at okay. an MSRP of $199. Uh, it will be around the country. $199. Wow. That's everything. $159 to $199. Every single thing. Except Buffalo Trace, who's like, we don't care. We're not going to overprice. Well, I think that's just the nature of the market right now. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we talked about it, and especially with the about what's happening going on right now in the releases, everybody's kind of hoping that they do raise their prices so that the retailers can't take yeah. as much uh, in their pockets, right? And they have to kind of sell it at a reasonable price. And right. at, at these prices, I mean, I don't know. You might start seeing some people exit the market or some people that just are going to pass over it, and therefore it's only going to go to those people that, can afford it or that really want it or that have the, uh, the amount of FOMO that Kerry talks about. <laughs> Why does everyone have to release in September, October, November? Why can't there be more than just Buffalo Trace putting out the seasonal E.H. Taylor in April? Like space the shit out a little bit. Why do we have to go bankrupt in November? It's not in my wallet. wallet. I, I mean, like I like it because after this, like I can relax for a year and then I'll have to go chase and hunt anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I like I like like the one, yeah, I like the one time of the year that I can save up, just go crazy, and then like, okay, I'm done for like six, seven months now. But if you're if you're orphan or you're 
Jefferson's, wouldn't you be like, man, let's hit the market when it's kind of low and people want something exciting to talk about? No, because you got a lot of people out and then stores can say, well, you know, I wasn't able to get you a stag, but I did and get you an entrapment. So here's one for $200. And it's aged 25 yeah. years. Holy yeah. shit. And, that's, and really that's two it, years past the pappy. Really, at the end of the day, it's the distributor to the store, right? Because the stores are the ones who are ultimately buying it first. Right, so distributors to stores, the stores all want the Pappy BTAC. Distributors can push this other stuff onto them. They know they've got people lined up for all this stuff. They want to give it to them, so they're going to buy it. You know, they're going to take the risk. They're going to hold the cards. You know, so they're taking all the chance. The retailers are taking all the chance on whether or not this stuff sells. And the in between stuff, yeah, it's it's distribute, yeah, distributors and the retailers that are. I, I, I got to give the retailers credit. I mean, I think the distributors get left out of the conversation a lot of the times. I mean, the, you know, the retailers really are the ones that are dealing with the consumers who are in a lot of cases crazy over this stuff, you know, hunting around, calling like crazy. You know, they get so many calls a day and they get five bottles, 10 bottles, you know, depending how big they are. You know, the retailers really have, I think, the most juggling to do in the market. And then they're the ones who are really buying all this stuff and taking the risk on it, which it may or may not sell. I mean, what was Jefferson's 21? Was that back in, I saw that on the shelves back in 2013. That was 120, I want to say. And that was around. It was out for a while. You know, if you wanted it, you could find it at least here in New York. You know, now this Jefferson's, I'm not sure if we'll really see see it hit the shelf. I think they're going to have enough people they can put it off on who are hunting for Pappy and BTAC and don't get it. I mean, it's coming. I'll buy it. And I can say in the market. So it should be here any day. The 16th? Yeah, the 16th. I'll probably pick one up just to take the hit for everybody. And I'll next round to <laughs> buy the 16th. And I'll just go bankrupt when I'm trying all these finished gimmicky whiskeys. Although I will yeah, I mean, finish. Um, sorry. Go. No, go ahead, Kerry. I was going to say, I did try um, for thirty nine ninety nine. I saw that. Um, who was it that had the sherry cask finish? Um, it was, oh, man. Uh, no, it wasn't Bowman. It was wasn't the Bowman a brand. You don't you don't say all you don't hear all the time, but it was this thirty nine ninety nine. It was a sherry cask finish. Um, Bellmead. No, it's, Bell it's, it's like a um, uh, like uh, pepper. Uh, James, James pepper. pepper. James pepper. pepper. Yeah. Um, I actually thought their sherry rye cask finish is awesome. Like it is a really really good I, finished. I saw it terrible, but it was it was on bourbon or somebody was saying it was terrible but yeah, right. i haven't tried it yet it's good it's got a nice sherry finish it's is it uh is it rye or bourbon i can't remember i believe it's rye i think it's a rye it's it's a great great finish and it's only 39.99 it's on every shelf in atlanta nobody knows about it it's it's one of those things where you gotta take a chance on every stuff yeah I, actually, I, I had the uh bell mead sherry cast finish the other day and it was really good um oh, that like is that, good that's one that gets overlooked because they're kind of producing several different cast finish and everything. And actually their, um, their new distillate was really good too. So that's, that's another subject, but it's like the, <laughs> the Waylands just came out with their barrel proof, which is sitting yeah. here in Atlanta. Um, it's just, you know, you don't, a lot of the products don't have the name that the other ones mm -hmm. do. And, I mean, there's so much good stuff. You just you got to wade through all the bull crap to figure out what's actually good. I think I think there's gonna be a lot of bull crap that's gonna be out there. That's for sure. Um, but I mean, you know, I was just sitting here kind of reading some of the uh, uh, the comments. You know, Carrie, when you were talking about, you know, is uh, whether if uh, you know why don't why don't Jeffersons or anybody else wait till a different month? Um, somebody said because everybody's uh, Larwood ninety one said it's because everybody's too focused on Blake's maps right now. Um, uh, Speakeasy Wisconsin said that Four Roses also jumped their shark on pricing last year. Twenty sixteen small batch limited edition was about eighty bucks. This year it's like one hundred and fifty, one hundred twenty five. So it just uh, everybody's everybody's just kind of going up and up. Um, so it's 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 just gonna be a, a common thread. I think that we're gonna have to uh, uh, just kind of deal with now. I think that's okay though. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a market of supply and demand, and right now the demand is high. So go ahead and I mean Uber does it. They do search pricing. Yeah, sure. We complain. We can wait twenty minutes, but you know we're not gonna wait fifteen years to buy a bottle of bourbon, right? So right. it's uh, it's one of those things that you just kind of have to suck it up if you want it. Then that's that's what you have to do. That's what it is. What's your take on like 
the surge pricing? Has it? Do you think it's still? Uh, had is it, has it hit its plateau, or do you think it's still underway? I think it's underway, but like just earlier, we were talking about the last couple of secondary bottles, like like the Kentucky Owl Rye. We all agree that's great, but there's no secondary for it because it's already 130 bucks. So maybe we are moving in at least a little bit of the right direction. I mean, the the entrapment is, is shit. We all know that shit. That's why there's no secondary for that. But the Owl Rye, I think, is a good example. Even, you know, we were talking about the Four Roses limited edition. That price has gone up. People are talking. I think we scored one for like 99, but that, that's rare. I've seen it 140, 150. Secondary is right at 200. It's only 50 bucks more. Whereas a lot of the other things we're seeing a lot more of an increase. So maybe, you know, idealistically, maybe we're working in the right direction. I don't think we're there yet, but I think maybe we're getting there. Yeah. I think one positive thing, um, when, I'm, when I'm at work, I, I run a lot of IT stuff that has to run and compile and Penny, Penny, you know this stuff. That leaves me a little window to do something on the side. So sometimes I'll just check out the bourbon secondary market. I think the market has gone stale and I don't know if it's a seasonal thing or if it's just a state, a general statement, but you know, if you look hard enough and follow it long enough, the market in general, I think has gotten a little bit stale. And I think that's good news for all of us who are, have been around bourbon for a while and, and want to stay in bourbon. Um, I think it's a positive sign for the market to start to die down. I just don't know how much of that is, you know, people are so focused on their local hunts that they're not sitting on the secondary boards or they don't have any money right now because they're, you know, happy season. But I just, I think it's, um, it's starting to trend in the right direction. I hope it's a, it's a long-term trend and not a short-term one. The thing that's hard to put into to perspective is the actual volume because you're still seeing BTAC, you're still seeing Pappy especially going for multiples of MSRP, but what's the actual volume of that? relative to everything that's out there. I mean, are we looking at, you know, 5% of the transactions, 10% of the transactions? What is it? It's, there's no measurement for that because everything happens, you know, on sites where you can't really, you can't really trace it. Yeah. And there's right. so many different sites anyway. So which one do you base as the, the baseline? I think, that's one. I think we'd all agree there's one now. That's kind of the main. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's definitely one that's bigger than the rest. There's yep. no dispute there. So I'll take like an opposite stance on there. And I, I still think the secondary market is live and flourishing. And, uh, you know, I think we saw, um, you know, we had talked about earlier today or earlier this, this table talking about people that keep asking the same questions over and over again. And this is kind of going back to a, an article that Blake put out uh, this past week. And it was uh, Carrie and Blake, you guys did some sleuthing and found out, talked to Buffalo Trace because Pappy Van Winkle's 15 this year. Uh, it looks a little bit different than uh, what we've been accustomed to. So uh, I'll let one of you guys kind of talk about that real quick too. Of recent well, I broke it. I broke it. So I guess I'll talk about it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Blake. Um, so what's, what's awesome to me is that a company like Buffalo Trace will admit when they've made a mistake. And it took a couple days. The Pappy Van Winkle 15 this year has red foil instead of its normal black foil. And they have admitted that it was just a mistake. I think they may have used... They may have gotten everything lined up, and because there's no Van Winkle Rye, I think they may have used the red foil for Van Winkle Rye. They didn't go into detail on it, but Peppy Van Winkle 15 this year has red foil by mistake. And they're like, yeah, we screwed it up. We used the wrong foil. And it's um, it's just one of those things that's cool about Buffalo Trace. Is they're they're you know, pretty open about that kind of stuff. They keep the pricing down. Um, I still think it's going to make it a little bit more collectible, but... I mean, there's also a lot of it this year. So, anyway, that's that's the whole red foil escapade. Yeah, yeah I think it it just goes to show you how little of a percentage these kind of releases are for a distillery like Buffalo Trace. You know, something like the wrong foil goes on there, and you know maybe they did know before it actually hit the market, but the um, you know the press release and everything had the black foil on the 15 year, and then it was it, it seemed very reactive. So makes me think that it was just like oh oh it did go out so you know that's probably a half a day of bottling whenever they're bottling tens of thousands of bottles of everything else yeah the other 364 days out of the year um 
So, and just to kind of touch on the uh, secondary market as well, I do tend to agree with Kenny a little bit here. Maybe we've leveled off a little bit, but I still don't see it slowing down um, nearly as much. Um, maybe in our own lives, we've we start to care a little bit less, but it still seems like those prices growing higher and higher um, every day. And it, it may plane off, but I don't see it ever dropping down. You know, I don't ever see Pappy 15 going for less than about 800 bucks on the secondary market. Now, well, last year, maybe. Well, this year, yeah. Like yeah. 50, but 23 has stayed stable and maybe even starting to come down a little bit. So I think you have a trend of lower tier bottles, um, lower ten, lower tier rare bottles that more people are getting tend to see a price increase, and the more rare exclusive bottles are maintaining, if not dropping. Max or Nick, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I think there's a possibility that price going up is representative of fewer coming to market, or at least fewer coming to market, re obviously relative to the demand for those bottles. You know, if, if BTAC is going for seven, eight hundred dollars a bottle, you know, whatever that is, I mean, you know, you just got to think how bad does somebody want it to pay that? So how many bottles are coming out to that market? Because there's no legal place really to do that, or at least not easily, you know, instead of auctions and things like that. So, you know, if you want it that bad, especially if you're a bar or restaurant, I mean, you're going to be able to turn on and still make a profit in a lot of cases, even if the price is high. So you're still going to buy it. Yeah, so it's definitely, I think, still there. Whether or not there's more people or we're just seeing an increase in price or whatever the case might be, you know, it's, it's really tough to speculate on that. Right. So let, I want to kind of move on. We, we, give, we give Pappy way too much talk on this. You know, like, <laughs> we, we're part of the damn problem. You guys realize that, right? <laughs> we are the problem. It, it just really is. <laughs> it really is. So, um, so I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. Um, you know, I, I was going to try to make a transition like you and you. Had. This episode of Bourbon Pursuit is made possible through listeners like you supported through Patreon and with partnerships brought to you by the following. Day Drink and Jerky came to life when a passion for making smoked jerky and a love for fine bourbon united. It was an obvious marriage and the proof was in the results. Word about their amazing small batch jerky got around from friend to friend, catching on like a prairie wildfire. Day Drink and Jerky is made with bourbon and other spirits mixed into the marinade and then slow smoked with hickory wood, infusing the meat with natural seasoning and smokiness to add a punch of flavor that is beyond comparison or replication. With options like beef jerky, beef sticks, and turkey sticks, with an impressive lineup of flavors such as bourbon black pepper, rhyme lum sriracha, and hazmat sas teriyaki, Day Drink and Jerky will keep your taste buds happy for days. They even have a monthly subscription service. You can find them on Facebook and shop their online store at daydrinkandjerky.com. Use offer code PURSUIT to save 10% on your first order. So let, I want to kind of move on. We, we, give, we give Pappy way too much talk on this. You know, like, <laughs> we, we're part of the damn problem. You guys realize that, right? <laughs> we are the problem. It just really perpetuated. is. <laughs> it really is. So, um, so I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. Um, you know, I, I was going to try to make a transition because Blake, you had, you had deemed this the, uh, the Christmas Pappy. I believe this was what you would call it or something Santa like Claus that. Pappy. Or Santa Claus <laughs> Pappy. Yeah. The 15, the 15 this year. So, uh, you know, to trademark it, that since I missed out on poor man's Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is, this is the one time of the year, you know, we're going into the holiday season and, you know, I don't like to consider myself a bourbon connoisseur, but family members, they probably consider you all bourbon connoisseurs. And you kind of have this uh, obligation, if you will, to bring a few bottles over to share with your family during the holidays. So uh, what are some of those? Max, I'll give you a, a, a let you have a first shot at this. So like, what are some of those bottles that you bring to have your family sample out? Maybe they're not unicorns or maybe they are. I mean, what, what do you what do you typically bring for the holidays? Uh, my, my actually, that's, that's actually a good question because I just recently got my dad into bourbon, like just over the past year or two. You know, growing up, he drank nothing ever, and then now he's got like twelve bottles of bourbon. He texted me a picture the other day of like three Weller twelve sitting on the shelf. He's like doing his hunting thing. He's doing pretty well. But before then, I would have said uh, store picks all day long. I would have brought 
you know, an Eagle Rare store pick, an OWA store pick, and maybe like an Elijah Craig barrel proof or something that if somebody wanted the higher proof. It's it's all good. It, nothing's going to break my bank. Nothing's, you know, I'm not going to be super pissed off if somebody mixes an Eagle Rare store pick, like, you know, whatever is $35. It's not the end of the world. But if somebody wants to pull out a Glen Cairn and, like, have a drink of whiskey and, like, get technical about it, like, you can enjoy any of those glasses of whiskey. Nick, what about you, man? Yeah, I got to say it's, uh, you know, good I think good advice from Max. I, I will kind of add to that that I guess with the right people, I'm, I'm not bashful about taking out whatever the good stuff, you know, the expensive, the hard to get stuff, whatever. Yeah, I feel like that's the kind of thing that, you know, I don't really get out that often. You know, I'm not drinking it myself usually alone. You know, I don't have people over a lot, you know, I mean, I have two kids, you know, so life is very busy, you know, so very few nights we're, you know, hanging out with a lot of adults, that kind of a thing, um, without kids around. So, you know, I do like to get out those, you know, the BTACs and, you know, the Elijah Craig 20 year, you know, things like that and kind of give somebody something they've maybe heard about and, you know, have some appreciation, you know, something that is going to sip it neat. Obviously, uh, I think that can be a lot of fun. You know, if I'm going to bring a bottle though, or bring bottles and they're just going to sit somewhere, and people are going to have at it. Obviously, those are going to be, I think, more kind of go towards the standard stuff, the things that I think everyone's going to like, you know, be it like a Four Roses small batch or something like that. You know, it's well, funny because with the wrong crowd, you just, the good stuff is gone. Exactly. You know, it's pointless. They, they try Thomas H. Handy and they're like, oh, I can't even, it's disgusting. You know, well, if you don't really drink that much, you're not going to like it, you know, so you want to make, sure, be careful you don't. I guess kind of wait, ruin their experience, but also kind of waste some good whiskey on, you know, a, a situation where somebody's not going to want it or appreciate it. Absolutely. I and, love it. Uh, and, 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 and kind of talk about with kids. I think kids are kind of the reason why we still drink right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so for me, like there is nothing greater than pouring something really nice for my dad or my brother who take a sip and they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and they, they ask for the Coke and they pour it. I don't care at all. I mean, it, it's all about, you know, making memories with the stuff. And my brother has started to, you know, come into whiskey a little bit more. And I had some of that Dickel 17 back when George Dickel released it. He loves it. He's like, give me another bottle of that Dickel 17. I don't care how they drink it. I just want them to enjoy it. I want them to, to feel good at Thanksgiving. And um, to me, it's just whiskey. And so I, you know, I love to pour it for friends and family and everybody, drink whatever the hell you want. I don't care. Um, did you say gifts yet? Or are we waiting on the gifts part? We'll do that next. We'll do that okay. next. Spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say for, for me, um, I'm kind of with Carrie. Uh, I get a little more enjoyment from giving somebody a really sought after expensive bottle who could care less about bourbon or anything that is would never listen to this bourbon community roundtable, but yet you're like, hey, here, try, uh, you know, George T. Stagg, you'll love it. Like, oh, this is pure gasoline. Which is, <laughs> something about that just gives me a little more pleasure than the guy who has, you know, drank bourbon twice and is like, oh, yeah, it's very oaky and cherry. And I'm like, okay, you, but um, I typically bring a lot of sample bottles too, just to give people different. Um, different yes. ideas of, of what's out there. Um, I've been taking Kentucky Owl Rye with me a lot. I know we've talked about that several times. I was kind of looking on my shelf here. Um, just just a mix. Um, I've actually been toting several bottles of rum with me to different parties recently as well. Um, but, you know, I like to, to mix it up. You know, give somebody a rye, give them a, a high rye bourbon and maybe a weeded bourbon and say, okay, you know, here's here's kind of what you should be tasting, that kind of thing. Um, it, it's always fun to taste with, to drink with people you enjoy being around no matter what. Um, so. so I got a question for you, Blake. So when you bring out those sample bottles, does your family look at you like, who the fuck is this guy? Like what's <laughs> yeah. No, no, right no. Now. I, I only get invited to these places because they know I'm going to bring a, two Lululemon bags of bourbon bottles and whiskey bottles and everything else. That's, <laughs> I basically figured out that's my, my, uh, plot in life is, uh, I was going to my sister-in-law's birthday the other day and I texted my brother. I'm like, Hey, 
we need to bring anything. He's like, eh, just probably something to drink. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> I, I know what that means. <laughs> is that also your official roundtable gear? Is that you you put on your Lululemons before we start recording? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I do some air squats, little, little stretching, get my Lululemon <laughs> shorts on. <laughs> Gotta get prepared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there's a there's a pretty funny comments that were that were happening. So Chris Haynes says that Kerry needs to give his dad and bro the entrapment. So I, know, I totally am. That's a great idea, Dad, brother. I got 25 year whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna love, love it. it. Everything <laughs> my dad tries though, he says it tastes like cognac. That's great. <laughs> it's like it's like a good cognac. So maybe we're missing out on the whole cognac market. Perhaps, uh, uh -oh. and then uh, Michael R said, "You know, you got to you got to implement decoy bourbons as well. So they put out like the makers in Woodford for the crowd, and then bring the good stuff by the fire for people that can hang. So that's a that's a pretty good idea. You know, for me, I I think it's it's actually it's kind of amusing how the family almost wants to turn into a little bit more of a connoisseur when they're drinking with me, right? You know, I'll I'll bring like nine or ten Glen Cairns with me and." I'll pour them out and they don't sit there and ask for ice or whatever. They, they try and drink it as the way I'm drinking it. So uh, it seems like they're they're trying to get into it and trying to appreciate it as much, which is always cool. Usually uh, I always bring at least like one or two bottles of something that, you know, they're never going to be able to try. Uh, otherwise, usually it's just a, a lower Van Winkle or something like that, just so they could say that they've had it. Um, it's always one of those good things that, you know, when you can uh, spoil them a little bit, that's always a good thing to do as well. Mm -hmm. So to uh, transition to our last segment of the night, Carrie already kind of gave it away, but I, I talked at, at the very beginning and uh, the Christmas season is slowly approaching uh, and we are getting into uh, this. This was I chose this episode uh, to start doing the Christmas presents because, uh, well, you know, usually November, uh, the day after Thanksgiving or even at Thanksgiving is usually when people put out their lists and you have to swap names and then you go back and then you got a month to go and find everything. And then our December podcast is going to be too far away. So I said, this is going to be a good one to do. So what I told the guys to do is uh, I told them to do, do a little bit of research today and kind of figure out like, and we didn't share anything beforehand. So this is all going to kind of be, uh, who knows, there might be some, some overlap. There might be, uh, uh, some shameless and selfless plugs, which is always appreciated around here. And then, uh, you know, we're going to kind of see what are those top gifts ideas for uh, a bourbon person. You know, it could be bottles, it could be ice molds, it could be clothing, it could be all those different things. So anybody that's out there listening right in this and is trying to think of ideas of what maybe they want or ideas that they can give to somebody else, here's your opportunity to hear uh, a few different things. So I will let uh, whoever wants to go first kind of just go ahead and uh, run with it. Max is first. All right. that's, that's called your punishment for for you know only having number two on your on your belt right here. You're drinking water, come on, Max. Get you some bourbon. <laughs> oh, I, I he's some drinking bourbon. bourbon. I've been drinking. Here, I've been here's drinking a shameless water. plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> there you go. Buy one of these. Uh, but no, seriously, I actually did look into it, and as soon as you told me that, I thought of this video. And I watched it. I saw it was one of those Facebook things. You know, we all like bourbon stuff, so Facebook shows us bourbon stuff. And it was for the Phantom Ice Maker. I don't know if you guys saw this. It was a Winter Smith thing. They yeah. they make regular clear ice makers, and they actually work pretty freaking well. But this one's like massive, and it's stainless steel. And instead of making one ice ball that you can drink by yourself, it actually makes like seven. But I looked into it, and it's still on Kickstarter, so you're not going to get it by Christmas. But it's really, it's still really cool. I actually, I actually bought one of those on Kickstarter, uh, like this this Phantom one. I I got in one of the early bird pricing on, I think on like the uh, the third tier yeah. one or whatever it is. It was so. only like, what'd you pay? It was only like eighty or ninety bucks at the beginning, and I looked, and now it's already up to like one twenty five. Yeah, I think the early bird pricing sold out in less than uh, six hours. It was, it went fast. Yeah, it looks really cool though. So let us know when you get it. Yeah, I will. It it is pretty cool. I, I saw it. So anybody else that's into ice molds and stuff like that, this is probably one of the better ones you're ever gonna find out there for doing it at home. It does something like um, a top to bottom freezing technique that like pushes out air bubbles and all this other kind of stuff, and you actually get crystal clear ice cubes from uh, just your regular um, tap water. Instead of yeah, having to go it, and get it um, works really, really well. I bought one of the cheaper ones from like Crate and Barrel or something, and it's like the same concept and it didn't really work at all. But these ones, the 
was it? Yeah, Wintersmith. They're big things, and they do exactly that. They like insulate it so it freezes. And it, I don't use ice that often, honestly. Mostly, it's for guests or my uh, my fiance has been drinking on the rocks a little bit here and there. So I'll give her the fancy ice. But they, 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 they just look cool. So what's next, man? Let's. Uh, I know we're running a little bit high on time right here. So let's let's go ahead and we'll try to run through these. You're a jerk, Kenny. Max, congratulations, man. Have a great way. Listen, <laughs> thank you. To the fans or to the family <laughs> and the fans who send us these 1,200 different varieties of ice molds and ice balls and metal that's in the shape of, you know, you freeze it and it's metal. We really don't use ice. I mean, we might drop yeah. an ice cube in our cups, but really we're not going to use ice. And there was one time I had a Glenn Karn with one of those – those round balls in it and forgot that I was empty on the whiskey and just did one of these and the ball hit the front of my tooth <laughs> like the ice ball hit it and it hurt for like a freaking 30 minutes it like hit the nerve up here so I hate those stones I have a bunch of those stones the rocks like, you know it still tastes rock at some point yeah like, it's, it's a rock man but get that I, was, out of my whiskey. I, I have like, never used up you, you never can get enough of cool glasses. Glen Carn glasses are always awesome. Yeah, the Northern um, glass is pretty cool. If you give us a gift certificate to Total Wine or like any kind of liquor store, we can buy beer or liquor. It is the greatest gift you can give to us or cash. We love I second you. that. I second that. <laughs> Carrie's on the right track here. The greatest gift for a bourbon drinker, just put a $50 bill in that. I take back what I said. We will love you forever with some cash. All right. Well, that's an easy cop out. Thanks, Carrie. That's a horrible <laughs> idea. Who else who else has got some From good Christmas uncle. list ideas? Well, I was gonna say, I think uh, for the right price, Carrie will come to your house with a few bottles from his selection and <laughs> entertain for hours. I actually will. Right, Carrie? I actually will. You can hire me. I'll put on the clown outfit, whatever yeah. you want. I'll if on. I get that for Christmas, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Personalized tasting yeah. with bourbon pursuit. We could do that. Uh, the, thing, the thing that's kind of cool, I've actually never gotten one, but people have talked about it. And I think for somebody that wants to try a lot of different things, maybe, you know, can't have heard good things is the um, bourbon advent calendars from Master of Mall. Yeah, they used to cool. have like a whiskey, okay. like a whole whiskey thing. It was all kinds of different whiskeys. And they've since kind of made different ones so you can get just the bourbon one or just i think there's just the scotch one just you know that kind of a thing so i think for somebody that you know we can't do that over here you know in the u.s you really can't divide up you know bottles like that like they do and and put them in those smaller containers and get that many that many samples you know you get a lot of samples of different things in there like there's supposed to be a few kind of more rare you know special ones um but, uh, you know, if you listen to uh, what Bourbon Pursuit podcast was it with the high volume online retailers, I think they shared that really that's illegal. So it's just the fact that no one knows that we're buying stuff from internationally that we're still able to do it. So it's like get it while you can type of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's kind of a cool idea. And I will say that I got to kind of jump on with with Carrie in that, you know, the the idea that you're into bourbon or into whiskey that, you know, everybody thinks so like if, if it has something to do with bourbon or whiskey, you know, they're going to like it. You know, it just has a name on it, some like random thing. You know, the chance of that happening is probably pretty small. There's maybe a few things you might be into, but yeah, I think by and large, actually a bottle of some kind is usually, uh, you know, a safer bet. And sometimes a bottle that's maybe something that you wouldn't buy or wouldn't find, but not necessarily rare, you know, not the stuff of maybe something craft or just unique to an area or something that's kind of obscure you know, it's kind of fun to get, you know, I like to get bottles that I wouldn't necessarily buy myself, but they're available, generally speaking, you know, those are kind of fun because I never pull the trigger. Right, we don't buy the, the, the regular stuff usually on the shelf, so sometimes we yeah. find gems, you know. I think I got a bottle of, uh, you don't feel bad like opening it. it right there. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I got a bottle of uh, Hill, Rock, Hill Rock Estate Bourbon, and it's just like a $90 bottle. And my wife got it for me and uh you know something I, I you know it's a craft bourbon you know I, it's got kind of mixed reviews but it's something i was always curious about you know how much i liked it but it's pulling the trigger 90 dollars on a bottle like that kind of hard to do so getting it's like yeah, i'm kind of excited about that you know find us this and buy us this 
That's a good one. Not dram is what he's oh, talking. Oh, ninety dollar bottle right there. Yeah. Is that the is that the new one? The five? Yeah, the exact five. I have not had the five yet. I need to go get one. They're all good. They're all like they're just great. great winter whiskeys is what they are. It lives up to its name. <laughs> so so back to back to basics or back to the the, the shopping list here. Who else has Blake? We haven't Am touched I, on you yet, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of talk about what are what are some of those gifts that. Uh, you know, you can get a whiskey drinker in your life. I thought this was, we were just supposed to give this to our friends and family, what they should buy us for Christmas. So I don't know if this will be for all whiskey drinkers, but <laughs> no. Um, so, so I was kind of going with like some of my other uh, hobbies, but um, so vintage gentleman guy here, local in Jacksonville, he's doing a, uh, a coffee bourbon barrels uh, or bur bourbon barrel aged coffee which was really cool. Um, so I wanted to check that out. That was on my list. And then another guy, um, check him out on Instagram, Boot Hill Blades. I'm trying to talk him into making a bourboner knife. We haven't gotten that yet. So Chef's Knife's also really cool, you know, especially if you can get it with a, uh, a bourbon stave handle. Um, the third one, I would have to go with just some, some kind of bottle. Um, bottle or glass, some kind of or, you know, those have been used. Let's go with de decanter. Uh, everyone needs a good decanter in their life. So that's true. Um, I feel like that's Travis that's Roberts just said that. He said an engraved decanter and there you go. tasting a rock glasses. Like that's the way to, it's a mm -hmm. good, it's a good gift right there. Can always, yeah, you can get a, you can get a custom yeah. gl engraved Glen Cairn for like 20 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. Just put, put the person's name on it, send it to them. We'll love it. Yeah. Catch-22 put the Bellmead uh, 375 sampler. I actually got to try those, so that was a really cool um, a really cool thing. I thought that oh, was I didn't know they made that. Yeah, they did, they did the half bottles, so that was probably a pretty good gift set for people. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'll take one of those, whoever's listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is like Secret Santa where uh, people send us gifts. We just announce them. Or we just tell them what we want, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's how this works <laughs> so i'll uh, i'll put out a, a few things too so the, the three that i came up with uh two of them are, are shameless because they are uh sponsors of the show but i i have to give them the credit where credit is due because honestly they're they're incredible so everybody kind of likes chocolate right and so if you're looking uh you know for something that's really good i'm telling you guys if you've never had art eatables before you've got to try it when Art is the East store open? I what, is the online store open yet? The online store is opening here relatively soon. Uh, I've been checking for like months since they were first on the show. Well, I, I love me some chocolate. I can tell you right now, and this is this is something that they haven't really announced too much yet. It was on their Facebook page. So if you don't follow on Facebook, you don't know yet. But on Black Friday, they are doing their 12 Days of Bourbon. And this is their year release where they do um, premium bourbons, including in there, including the Pappies. So those are in there too, but there's things like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Magnus Cigar Blend that's going to be going in there, uh, and it's going to sell out on Black Friday, um, and shipping will begin on December 11th, uh, so that's always a good one if you've got somebody that is into chocolate and into bourbon in their life. I'm telling you, it's awesome. Every single time there is a, a trade show going on here or anything like that, and Art Eatables is there, I'm like eating three pounds of it uh, because it's it actually is delicious. They're they're better than any bourbon ball that you're going to try. Huh. Huh. Um, yeah, I, I, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so those are those are fantastic. And they do ship, and they just start shipping here in the fall and <laughs> the winter because, of course, you can't really ship chocolate too well during the uh, the spring and summer. Um, the other one is uh, – how many people here have, have ever tried the, uh, the day drinking jerky? Has anybody actually ever tried that before? Uh, yes, of course. I was one of the first ones that knew John Day when he started that whole thing. And what do you think? That's amazing. It's absolutely I, amazing jerky. I, I mean, that's what I thought too. I thought, I mean, it puts any other thing that you get at a gas station to shame. Uh, I mean, it's it's fantastic. Uh, the 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 Sazmat has uh, is is or sorry has Sazmat. Wait, what? Uh, that's that's a that's the one that I think is my favorite in the bourbon black pepper. Uh, yeah, those two. Yeah, it's so and the Sazerac, he has a Sazerac rye jerky that's. Damn, it's so good. Yeah. As Matt says, Terry. I mean, he home makes the stuff, and it's not, he doesn't have it just mass produced. Like, he makes it at home and and ships it out, and all of it is so damn good. The teriyaki Saz or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so make sure I you go. The, I eat the whole pack in one night. So, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, it, it goes it goes quick. So make sure you order. I think if you order four, uh, you get uh, free shipping. So keep that in mind too. If you if you are going to order, um, it's actually it's fantastic. That's it's really good stuff. So you just go to daydrinkandjerky dot com, uh, and there's actually a, a Bourbon Pursuit uh, code. Uh, that you can get on our website to get uh, some money off on your first order as well. Then uh, the last one, you know, Blake had had brought up, you know, taking rum over to people's places, and uh, I, I'd say you got to buy Fred Minnick's book and get him a bottle of Foursquare. Uh, you know, you mm -hmm. get him rum curious and a bottle of Foursquare for that whiskey lover in your life that maybe hasn't tried Foursquare yet or hasn't <laughs> tried rum. Uh, and, and Blake's holding up the 2004 right now, which is a, a good entry rum for those bourbon drinkers because it is a Barrel proof, ex bourbon cask. Um, you know, if they're if they're not believers after that, then that's fine. You don't have to convince them anymore. But I think those are uh, those are three really good gifts for uh, somebody that's uh, you know that likes bourbon in their life. You have sold out, bro. You have sold your soul to the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Taking them bribes to sell that stuff. Me and Max, <laughs> we just want cash. Give me the cash. Listen, I'm <laughs> I'm telling you because I'm serious. Like it's really good stuff. Uh, you know, I talk about the uh, art eatables and the and the beef jerky. I mean, I'm telling you, it's it's just they're actually they're just fantastic. Dante products. is sending you boxes, isn't he, behind the scenes? Like, I, it, right. Listen, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got stickers and all kinds. Of, no, I, I I honestly it was. Uh, it, it, and not only that is, you know, in all transparency, like when we when we talked about this, he didn't I, I didn't really even charge him that much to, to do this because I, I really wanted his his company and his product to succeed because uh, what he puts out is fantastic. Oh, uh, the, he is so good. Yeah. No, hey, didn't you have eat it fast. Didn't you have another thing? Another guy on the podcast a long time ago who did like bourbon smoked salt and like soy sauce and bourbon yeah. and pepper yeah. and, and like a bunch of other. Is that what it was? Bourbon Barrel Foods? It is Bourbon Barrel Foods. They have the tagline. I remember, they have a tagline, eat your bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember thinking that was really cool sounding, but same thing. It's something I would like never buy for myself. So maybe as a gift, you know, I'm not going to spend $10 on salt, but if somebody buys it for me, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Yes. Like salt. <laughs> I feel like salt, salt, but. Um, oh, oh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Is bourbon salt better than salt? Uh, yeah. In, in like it has to be. It's barrel aged. Everything <laughs> yeah. barrel aged is better automatically. I'll tell you, barrel aged coffee is fantastic. I mean, the good ones. Uh, I think yes, Blake you mentioned that's that. True. Barrel aged coffee is just phenomenal. So Go much. to thevintagegentleman.com to get your very own. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna jump in with Kenny too. I'm gonna do a shameless plug. We've got T-shirts. Available online right now. So, you know, somebody, everyone, you got to stay warm, cool in winter, whatever you want to do. Get a bourbon t shirt. Is that a uh, breaking bourbon t shirt you have on there? This is, yeah, we got a kind of, it's a bourbon thing. Nice. Wow, what a coincidence. Nice. Brand we're, we're, we're running with. So we're going to be rolling out some different, kind of more subtle kind of things with it. Some of them only bourbon geeks are going to get, others maybe more people will get, but that's the idea. I like I it. I like it. Thank Good you. Good deal. So uh, I'll just read a few more of them that are here in the comments. Uh, John Diamond said a, a Matthew McConaughey autograph bottle of Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> now I would pay for that if I get Matthew. I'll take the My Mila Kunitz Jim Bean instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, I don't even want the or, bottle. Just a picture signed is fine. With me. Yeah, that'll work. Because <laughs> what? They just came out with their vanilla beam, and that's what they, she's been plugging. So I, I think yeah. I'll, I'll pass on that one. Uh, let's see. Perfect Pour TV and WhiskeyThink.com said a, a subscription to Whiskey Advocate magazine, uh, which if you're doing that, even uh, the people that do GoBourbon.com and do the Bourbon Advocate magazine, that's a good one as well. Um, trying to think. Uh, anything else that I missed, fellas? Uh, Kyle Anderson said Heaven Hill is a sample pack. Uh, yes. Kind of forgot I about that. that. 20 minutes ago, the Heaven Hill sample pack is a perfect gift because there's five thingies in it and they look like test tubes. And you know we like test tubes. I love it. Right? I, have not, I have not heard of this. What's right. in that? Yeah. What's in it? It's uh, there's fucking yeah. There's like a lot. There's Elijah Craig. There's Evan Williams. There is Larceny. Larceny. Um, I think Burton House. Castle and Key. Oh, Pikesville's in there. Uh, Old Fitzgerald, seventy four. No, you got Bernheim, Larceny, Evan Williams, Single Barrel, Elijah yep. Craig, Small Batch, and Pikesville. Yep. Oh, okay. 
Uh, and and we can't we can't finish the show unless we say it one more time. Twenty two catch twenty two says if you got to buy something and you can't get the bottle, Pappy cigars. So there we go. We had mm-hmm. to throw one more Van Winkle in there. <laughs> so uh, fellas, I want to say thank you all again for uh, joining the roundtable tonight. This is another good discussion. We went a little long winded tonight, but but that's okay. I want to let all you all give a plug one more time for your blogs or vlogs or Facebook comments of where you can be, Twitter, everything like that. Uh, Max, go ahead first, man. Uh, it's Max Christie at Superfly Bourbon Club, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and superflybourbonclub.com. You can also find me at the Tampa Bay Whiskey Society if you're in the Florida area. Uh, don't have a Twitter, don't have a LinkedIn, don't have all those other things, so that's it for me. Tumblr. No Tumblr. We're going out LinkedIn tonight, today. <laughs> right. Right. MySpace. My Zero. bourbon resume is on there. If anybody's in need of a taster, I am available in the continental United States. All right, Nick, go ahead. You're up next. Yeah, Nick. All right. uh, Nick from Breaking Bourbon, uh, one of three guys behind BreakingBourbon.com. I uh, can follow us on social media. The uh, only clear. good one. What's that? The only good one. <laughs> <laughs> we're all good so shots well. fired <laughs> so uh find us on twitter instagram facebook uh at breaking bourbon and uh, if you want to support us uh patreon we got a patreon thing going we're actually going to be shipping out the uh prizes coming up in december we're doing kind of tasting kits uh glenn karen's tasting sheets we came up with uh reusable tasting sheets so uh Check us out. We appreciate all the followers, uh, you know, all the supporters on Patreon. That's that's huge. I mean, I give give those people huge credit for you know giving us money to do what we do. I mean, we uh, we spend an insane amount of time on the website, and uh, you know, it feels good to have people like kind of behind that and and want to be involved in that. So, just want to kind of say thank you to those folks too. Absolutely. And uh, I'll let you two Rochambeau for everyone wants to go last. I'll go. So say at this time that <laughs> Blake, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, dude. All right. I'm Blake from Bourboner.com. Uh you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I believe I do have a Tumblr. Um trying to get the YouTube channel started. Uh check out the Bourboner Blind Tasting coming up next uh next week, actually. You'll see a couple familiar faces um, and more familiar faces to come. So thanks for having us again. Or me. Absolutely. All right, Carrie. Oh, so is I'm, that me? Oh, so I'm doing crap, man. This is Carrie. You just find me here every <laughs> month. And, and you'll find me on Twitter. So, uh, Nick, I was just kidding, man. Breaking Bourbon and Bourbon R are the definitive bourbon blogs. You guys kick ass on the, on the, uh, on the HTML side, and then Kenny, you kick ass on the uh, <laughs> .mp4 side. Um, you guys are honestly the three definitive uh, blogs that I follow. And Max, I'm going to join SuperflyBourbon.com, man. I mean, I, I feel like you and I we have a thing going, and Let's do it. we're going to keep it up. Um, <laughs> but you can find me on Twitter if you're bored at Bourbon underscore Gamer. Usually, I'm um, I'm just talking trash, but I just want to say these other guys, you guys are rocking the house, constantly writing and keeping up with the bourbon world, even though I break a lot of secrets that, that you don't break. But, um, you recycle so, Carrie's information. do, because I am firsthand secret breaker, but, but you guys put in the time and effort to make it look pretty when you send it back out. And you are all our good dudes, so thank you for all your efforts and your work. Well, awesome. Thanks, Carrie. We Thanks, always appreciate Karen. you coming on Thanks here. Thanks for the good words. Yeah, we we always need some good uh, comedy relief too. So you're always uh, you're always a good you're, you're always a, you're always a good person to have here. That's Wrap it up and let's give boys samples. <laughs> so um, yeah, so make sure you also follow us. Uh, also, make sure you follow us on Facebook because we are going to be having a Black Friday deal on the Bourbon Pursuit Facebook page. So make sure you go and you like us there and follow us there. Uh, it's going to be as I said, Black Friday, so it'll be a one day sale that we'll be having. Uh, and also Instagram and Twitter uh, at Bourbon Pursuit. Also, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. There's also YouTube, Google Play. Um, uh, I mean, we're on pretty much every damn syndicate that's out there. So thank you, everybody, that is supporting us also on Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Bourbon Pursuit. If you want to give us any show suggestions, you want to send us hate mail, but you don't want to send it directly to Carrie, you can send it to me, and I'll relay it uh, in a secret <laughs> private message. Uh, it's the duo, T-H-E-D-U-O at Bourbon Pursuit dot com. 
Uh, with that, fellas, thank you again for joining, and we will see you all next week.